put the Vaseline smile on. Hello, everyone. This is uh, Jack, your host for today's show on the Amazing Scale Modelers Workbench uh, show. Uh, once a month. We didn't do it last week. Usually the first Saturday of the month we do it, but because it was an American holiday, we, well, I uh, decided that, hey, I don't think anybody's going to be around. As it turns out that everybody would be around doesn't even belong to the United States or elsewhere. <laughs> so, anyway, uh, we're here to talk about um, painting using a brush, an airbrush, or aerosols. And I think uh, here we've got a good uh, variety of people uh, to talk about these things. Um, I'm going to play the novice here, uh, like usual. I'm pretty compared to these guys. I'm very much am a novice, but uh, we'll get through the subject matter of, uh, of painting your uh, builds and what are the pros and cons. Maybe you can show off a few things too in the meantime. And also I'd like to bring up uh, like every month, uh, um, I'm a big fan of round two. I don't, I don't know if the guys here know that, but I'm pretty much a big fan of them. Uh, they got all the, all the major like AMT, MPC, um, everything but Revel or Revel uh, model kits um, and polar lights. Uh, so there's a couple of them behind me built already. And um, that uh, is, they do a video every month. And um, I did tune in a little bit this morning uh, for the July edition. They got a lot of nice cars. And finally, uh, you Star Trek fans, you've got your shuttlecraft uh, model kit. So you probably already know that, but it's been released this month. I do believe the thousand scale Discovery Enterprise was released last month. And I'm still trying to find it on eBay or or uh, my favorite place where where near where Bob lives, uh, the public shop in St. Louis. Uh, so without further ado, uh, let's just talk about of uh, the painting. Um, so when I started uh, in the hob, back into the hobby, a little more than seven years, oh, going on seven years now, um, the only concept I had of painting a model was with the brush. Only because the last model I built prior to that is when I was about 10. Uh, and that's what we used brush and thinner and, you know, the little uh, jars and bottles of uh, the testers. Uh, paint that smell just as good as their glue. Uh, so uh, that was my concept of painting. And my first model back, I threw together. I had since, since had fallen apart and went away. The very first model I built was the 18 inch Enterprise. Um, the AMT 18 inch Enterprise and I lit it too. And I was also at the same time dabbling with the idea of lighting models and so the first thing i used was aerosol was a rattle can it was really tough to find the paint but boy there was so much paint on that thing and i never did get it done and i do have uh some pictures of it and i'll, I'll dig them up uh, to show you all i should have had this uh, ready to go i didn't think i was going to talk about this but somebody suggested airbrushing using uh, a compressor and of course the airbrush and everything like that and that works so much better so let's let's go with the aerosol idea and uh the one who knows that all too well and he's trying to hide behind his camera but you see in order to hide behind his camera he's got to go behind his camera that will be Randall. <laughs> you do it almost exclusively is the rattle cans. Yeah, pretty much. Um, I'm probably the, I could be regarded as not a real modeler because I never use an airbrush. But... <laughs> uh oh. Uh oh, he froze up. Must oh. be really cold in the UK. Oh, you're back. There you are. All right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I use uh, pretty much exclusively uh, rattle cans these days. Uh, good old, uh, good old Tamiya. Oh, okay. I was wondering. Uh, you go to the hardware store, and you're you're kind of limited in your color, but you go to Tamiya. Okay. Yeah, yeah, and Humbrol as well. They do a good range as well. So, uh, 
maybe not as big a range as I would like. There are a lot of colors that uh, I would that are, I'm kind of limited with uh, with with rattle cans. Uh, most of them are actually metallics. Um, there's very few rattle cans that do a good metallic finish, uh, unless the subject to go for are aircraft that have been painted in a in a silver lacquer or something like that, and then can get away with. Um, Good old uh, aluminium, like uh, I did with uh, this here. The old Drummond Skyrocket, which isn't too bad. No, not at all. The tricky part, part of, of it is uh, the masking, because uh, with the rattle can, the... Uh, the paint tends to go everywhere. Uh, you're a bit more directional with an airbrush, I suppose. Uh, I've often entertained my neighbors uh, watching me being chased around the backyard with a cloud of spray paint, uh, trying to get it on the model. <laughs> but um, I managed to get it there, but I uh, have a couple of, uh, let's see, and call up something to share here. Now, while you're uh, doing that, I just want to bring this up. Um, this is like a car parts, and I use the purple power to remove the chrome. Mm -hmm. This is actually a rattle can um, chrome. Uh, it doesn't looks better on camera, actually. <laughs> so uh, I think it, you can get a pretty good facsimile of chrome, pretty good one. Uh, mm -hmm. I went to the hobby shop, to a hobby shop, and made the, asked the question, which paint is the best for chrome? And they shoved the can in my hand, and I bought it. And I've used this before, and it, like I said, it does a reasonably good chrome job. It's not like mirror, like chrome is usually like a mirror type, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, I've used the, the chrome myself usually on uh, Apollo spacecraft models things like that which I suppose I should have got a picture of it but anyway uh, <laughs> um, subjects like this involves uh, an awful lot more masking with uh, rattle cans and than you would with uh, probably an airbrush uh -huh. uh, in the larger scales uh, 32 scale like this this hunter but, I'd, uh, I'd still be inclined to mask that even using an airbrush Oh yeah. Uh, in this case, I used rolled rolled up uh, sausages of uh, blue tack. Sausages. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or well, right now I'm call, hungry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, an awful lot of masking in between, just to get a, a, a softish edge to the uh, to the camouflage here. Otherwise, if you're using just straightforward um, masking tape, that will be a hard edge. Yeah. Which, in some of the older World War II subjects, uh, where they used, on the real thing, they used mats, pre-cut mats to do the masking, so therefore you were getting a hard edge anyway. Um, it's like everybody else, I also started in the, uh, the, the old hairy stick, the brush. This was all done with the old hairy stick. <laughs> well, oh, Which, I'll turn off the caps there. Um, yeah, I, I was just uh, looking at our stream here. Uh, I'd like to, well, Heath is on the live chat. Uh, Mark from Mark's Hobby Bench is here as well. And there's Hanger Bird. Um, uh, here, I'd like to th welcome you all uh, to it. Now, he says he uses a, a brush and as well as a rattle can. And uh, Hanger Bird says airbrush versus rattle can, which goes on smoother. 
Well, we'll, we'll get to that question. Uh, that's a very good question. There's a lot of factors involved in answering that question, very much so. And uh, being that you're using the Tamiya rattle can, uh, I have used the Tamiya primer and they're all lacquer based. And lacquer lays flatter faster than maybe if you go with enamel like you would by uh, Krylon, for an example, mm. like brand Krylon. Uh, do you have Krylon in uh, the UK? Uh, no, uh, we I'll do have Rolleum. Uh, it's available through stores like B and Q. I think. Uh, uh, like a hardware store type. Yeah, store. hardware stores. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So the lacquer, the to me, is a lot finer than you'd get something from the hardware store, which would lay very clean, very flat. And uh, that's probably why you use the Tamiya, is that right? Yep, pretty much. Uh, they do lay down very well. Um, they're harder to get uh, a mist coat on with, um, which is uh, where I would probably go for something like um, there's game, Games Workshop uh, paints, uh, things like that, where uh, I've been able to successfully mist coat on and uh, probably the pigments a lot finer mm -hmm. but um sorry, I should start. i'm trying to look up, to look up pictures at the same yeah, time yeah doing a doing <laughs> a mist uh a mist uh coat is to say weathering would be yeah. you'd use a mist and with a spray can that would be very difficult because you cannot control the mist it comes yeah. out in one type of mist and that's what you're going to be you, you, yeah. you using using rattle cans it comes out one strength only so yeah um, yeah uh, airbrush you have a lot of autonomy and control over that it, yeah it can be done with a rattle can again it, it's, it certainly depends on the brand uh the games workshops uh brands are usually quite good as i said um Biggest problem is you have to pay attention to which can you've lifted. <laughs> like uh -huh. I, went, I, I went to put a, a flat coat on a model and I accidentally lifted the uh, uh, white paint <laughs> 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 and thought, "Oh, this this is this looks a bit cloudier than it should be." <laughs> Thankfully, I caught up <laughs> for it before I got too much paint on it. Just uh, all it did was just lightened it a wee bit. <laughs> Yeah, I, I noticed uh, a lot of the, the Krylon or the hardware kind of stuff uh, is a really thick paint and it layers up very quickly. Yeah. Uh, to me, if you're if you're uh, clouding it or you know just putting in a cloud of paint, uh, the layers uh, are much finer and you're not going to build it up as quickly with the lacquer. Is that was that be would that be a correct uh, assessment? Yeah, it would be. Um, sometimes I have accidentally layered on the, the tomato pin a, a bit too thick but thankfully it, it always seems to manage to level out more you know, it doesn't it doesn't seem to run as much as as other manufacturers uh, paint would if you lay it on too thick yeah there's two reasons for that one is the grain of the color in the paint is a lot finer mm. than you will find in your commercial utility paints and they also add levelers within the propellant to uh, to help that yeah mm -hmm. uh heath added in to me a paint so oh, well to me a paints hands down when it comes to rattle cans are probably the best um but he said that uh, uh maybe not as costly but probably just as good as the model masters from testers uh, Russell Williamson asked there, did the uh, blue tack not leave an oily mark? It, yeah, that it, it has done on occasion. Uh, unfortunately, it's, I don't know if they've changed the formula on blue tack recently, but it seems it seems to have left more of a, of a, a mark uh, on the paint, which is a bit harder to get rid of. Um, I'm, I'm told that silly putty is a better uh, yeah. alternative. It doesn't leave uh, any residue. Yeah. And also, there's uh, 
various modeling brands of the same thing. Mm -hmm. Although, there is one specifically for modeling. Um, I can't remember the manufacturer. It's a black, it's a black one that you put on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, that, uh, I just cannot remember the name of the, <laughs> the name of the manufacturer, the, moment, which the is German, no help to anyone. The German manufacturer or something that you use it like yourself. I can't remember the name of it. Yeah. Have a look. Uh, uh, but are the pigments better in the can over what you get paint from the airbrush? No. Oh, no. Oh, I, I think you can get the same kind of pigmentation. But again, with an airbrush, you not only have the control over the mist, particularly if you're using a dual action uh, airbrush. Uh, well, with a single action, you can still control the mist. But the pigmentation you can control with airbrush, too. You can thin it if you want to do a wash. Uh, tremendously, thin it tremendously. You, you, you don't need to buy a wash. You can make your own wash. Uh, just by using airbrush cleaner and a little bit of little bit of paint, and that'll take care of that. Uh, but you have a lot more control over an airbrush than a rattle can when it comes to everything. Mm -hmm. Do you do you agree? Disagree? Yeah. Oh, very much so. Absolutely. No, Absolutely. no you get just the, the pressure and the spread of the uh, of the paint flow. Mm -hmm. So much better. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, Heath even says you can use a lead pencil to lightly draw camo lines on too, which is it's a good idea. Yeah. Um, Russell, uh, you think it's an AK? I'm not sure <laughs> what you mean by that. Uh, hi, George. Oh, the uh, the manuf is that the manufacturer of the AK? AK. Yeah, the um, for, for that model, uh, the uh, masking. Masking compound, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, they do. All right. Yeah. Oh, oh. So it's like in place of blue tack. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah, don't, it won't leave uh, the same. Uh, don't red leave residue, residue uh, behind. Yeah. 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 Well, then in, in airbrush, uh, my first uh, foray, and I still haven't tried a dual action, um, is a uh, single action is an airbrush. Um, I bought a new one. Uh, the same brand that I had, the Pache, because uh, I take care of things like <laughs> not very well. And so after seven years, I had to finally, you know, get a new one and it, it sprays much nicer. Uh, when it comes to airbrushing, um, I found that now Tony, another member of ours, is getting me involved with a brand out of China. You can get this in, uh, or should I say on Amazon, and it's works just like the very expensive, like uh, Awada uh, air dual actions, and the design is very similar. Is that the master ones? The master ones, yeah, but they're a lot cheaper. My goodness, yeah. a lot cheaper. And he's had uh, good results. And if you know Tony McCash, you, you know the kind of work he does. He does pretty good. He does really good work, even though he doesn't think so. And but master and master gives you, you if you're new if you want to get into airbrushing master's not a bad way to start because you can get a compressor you can get a whole kit airbrush the extension hose everything all in one kit for a starter kit. yeah you know what now that you bring that up i think i have uh it's saved because uh he's got me turned on to it um uh, how do you how does one use amazon <laughs> <laughs> if you ever figure uh, that out yet, Jack? Then well, you know, it, <laughs> it was asked. It was asked very rapidly of me. So uh, I think there has to be a Nobel Prize for the you know, somebody who successfully uses that. <laughs> okay, that looks better. Let me see if I can share, share, share here, share. There it is. Yeah. Uh, this is, uh, if you're beginning, oh, currently unavailable. Oh, how dare they? Uh, this is very sought after because of the price. I, I think the price was stupidly cheap. I think it was like a 150. Well, I guess it for 130. So I might point out, I personally wouldn't go for that one because it doesn't have the tank. 
Yeah, you, you really you, want to get one with a tank oh, because oh, otherwise, yeah. Yeah. otherwise that will be constantly running every time you're using the airbrush. Yeah, then you, can, you can running. get if you've got a straight output without a tank, you risk getting pulsing in your output out of the brush. Yes, yeah. which can leave visible marks on yeah. your subject. So okay. if uh, that's one thing, if you're looking for a compressor, look for one with a secondary tank on it. Yep. Because then that'll that'll eliminate that problem. Well, the reason I'm bringing this one up, uh, because you've got the cleaning brush, you've got some jars, you've got uh, three different types. Uh, two gravity. These are two gravity ones that were dual action. Yeah. And this will be a siphon, which is a single action. This is what so, I so use. Si yeah, siphon brushes aren't aren't that good. They're they're, they're sort of. The they're, only, they're, only, yeah, but they're only really one step up from um from a rattle can to be honest yeah, what you say? They're, they're the rattle cans of airbrushes yeah <laughs> well i'm just bringing this up because uh, yeah, yeah. show that you can uh, if you, uh, uh, get involved in a very big way so let's, if you uh, if you if you scroll down a bit again just just look scroll. at the other master ones you there's see, one there we go there's one, one there's for 149 those. or look below go below that there should be a kit down yeah there's one uh, for one, up. one, one ninety nine. It's a kit. Here, that, yeah, that, yeah, that's the one. Yeah, click on that one. You see, that one comes with the tank, the expansion oh, tank too, and it comes with and paint. paint. <laughs> and paint. You got one Mixing cups. You have one airbrush. You have an airbrush and, holder. That's useful. And a cleaner. And your airbrush cleaner. cleaner. Yep. Oh, yeah. Yep. That's all useful stuff. Though. And and you've got a regulator on there for regulating the pressure, which um, that's that's a good thing. Yeah. And also um, with with an expansion tank, your compressor is not working so hard because all it does is it builds up the pressure, and then your airbrush uses the pressure out the tank, and it will only kick in when the pressure drops below a certain level. So yeah. it's not constantly running, and it's not getting too hot. Well, this is going back to, I think, one of the questions is, um, when we were talking about the aerosol, oh, let me get rid of this. When we were talking about, I'll get back to the, this uh, screen share. Um, we, were, we were mentioning the control over the spray. Higher air pressure means the paint is going to be atomized or make droplets made smaller than as opposed to lower pressure, which kind of spits. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. There are, when you are in getting involved with airbrushing, I was told many times, don't have a build model and practice on it. Practice on maybe even a piece of paper to yeah. understand your air pressure in conjunction with the paint, the brand of paint, the type of paint that you use, and to see what air pressure you would use for that uh, to come out with a clean coat. And also right? experiment with the thinning of the paint because you want, you want your paint, as a general rule of thumb, to be about the consistency of skim milk. So it yeah. needs to be really thin. Um, and, and then you normally you would try and spray at as low a pressure as you can get away with mm. for the added control. So usually about... 10 psi or less um if, if you're if you're spraying say a primer which comes straight out the bottle and it's a bit thicker then you'd probably be spraying that at somewhere in the region of 20 psi yeah um yeah. just to get it through the airbrush and get it good depends on your type of paint you could, your you, metallic you could you, good you, coverage on it as in in the um with, with re regards to primer, but with the actual paint itself, you're looking at really fine control where yeah. you can. The only difference is the different types of paint or different size for different pressures. Yes. Especially your metallic paints usually yes. require a little more pressure than uh, the than straight standard color. Yeah, just because of the particulates in the uh, in the paint. Yeah. Yeah. Well, maybe before you can answer this question, though, is that Hanger Bird said that he understands that to control the pressure with an airbrush. But the question is about the paint in the a rattle can, or maybe you can get involved with this brand. It, de it depends on the brand. 
Yeah. It, it depends on the brand because okay. you, you you can use Tamiya paint out of a rattle can, which is kind of a more more like a lacquer anyway. But then their acrylic paints are more like lacquer acrylics. They they'll have the same probably around the same grain structure, you know, grain size as what's in the rattle cans. Yeah. So you'll get about the same finish if um uh, with with, uh, with an airbrush using Tamiya paints, as you would say with using a rattle can. Uh, yeah, you know, it... My only problem with Tamiya as a brand is the uh, they don't match the rattle can paint with no. the bottle paint. No, no, no. The, the they, one, they are separate. The one nice thing about the, the Humbrol range is that they all match their, their, their uh, acrylic and enamel Paint yeah, rate, yeah, which means it makes uh, uh, touching up uh, a bit, you know, a lot easier. Yeah, you can yeah. if you're one yeah. rattle can. You can also use the uh, artist air, air artists uh, rattle cans too, but they're more expensive. Hmm. But the paint color is more consistent. Yeah. Now, you know, with the, when you're <coughs> rattle, you have to decant the yeah. the the, uh, the paint into uh, a container. Which uh, essentially just sticking a straw in the end of the uh, the nozzle of the rattle can. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah. pouring down that and into uh, into the containers, uh, let it settle for a bit, let the, the gas out, and then you can use that for uh, touching yeah. up the paint that'll match. But, the, the use yeah, paint. it answered the second part of his question. Uh, it's same. It's the same thing between a uh, rattle can and an airbrush. It all has to do with your source paint. What is the quality of your source paint? Yeah, and that's the difference is right there. So it's basically the same with both, it's whatever the the quality of the uh, source paint. The one thing I find with Tamiya uh, on, on the on the downside, as you say, the range that that to make accurate colors, you'll often have to mix mm. to to, mm. to get an accurate color to match something. Uh, on the plus side. Tamiya paints are bulletproof. When the, when the, when you sprayed them on, if you've got a, a properly prepared surface um, with primer, and you spray Tamiya paint on it, it and it's and it's set properly, then you, it'll usually with hand, uh, withstand any any amount of handling. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of the other ones like Vallejo, uh, Model Air, that sort of thing, they tend to be quite fragile. You have to have a really good primer surface for them to bite onto but they are more water based whereas Tamiya are a lacquer not exactly, yeah. And, yeah and the other thing of course is with Tamiya paints is they don't brush paint very well um, no not designed for brush painting yeah. if, you, if you want if you want to brush paint Tamiya you have to oh, kind of, well I, I could yeah. brush paint uh, brush paint uh, Vallejo Air in fact I'd rather yeah Brush paint Vallejo Air than the Vallejo model, which no, is the, yeah, the Vallejo Air brush paint's really nice because it's just yeah. the right. It, it goes texture. on nice and smooth. Yeah, and, um, yeah. That's so the other thing. Smooth. That's the other thing with your brush painting. Make sure you have a fine haired brush. Yeah. A cheap brush with thick hairs is going to leave streaks. <laughs> so you need to buy a quality fine haired brush, usually one that's. Rated for acrylics if you're doing acrylics, something something like this. That's yeah, not, especially if you get a good a good a good tackle on brush, which is actually feathered at the tip, and mm -hmm. that makes a big difference. Mm -hmm. You know. Well, and, and looking after your brushes after you've used them too. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Make sure you're thoroughly cleaned. Yeah. That's another oh thing. yeah. Always clean your brushes right away. Mm. That, that that's a good thing. Brush soap. Yeah, mm. you can get that um, in your art store. That's no problem. Yeah, mm. Hangerbird also says, uh, "What is a decent, inexpensive airbrush for this sort of job?" Too, uh, when it comes to detail, I think if you're going to go with detail, um, uh, painting, you would want to use the dual action because you have complete control of the angle of the spray as as well as the density of it. Yeah. Oh, I understand now. I there you go. That's what. Uh, that, that that's my dual action. You you 
press that down, that gets the air flowing, and you draw it back. And the further back you draw it, the more air come, uh, the more paint comes out the nozzle. And, and the, the wider the yeah. Uh, and the, and the what yeah. The and wider. the nozzles come in different sizes to. Uh, well, the nozzle and the the uh, yeah. The uh, pin. The. Yeah. Uh, the needle. the needle, yeah. The needle, the needles come in different diameters. Yeah. So the smaller the diameter of the needle, the finer the uh, output. Uh, you mean the angle of the output? Because no, the the actual diameter it, of the needle. It, it, the, well, I'm yeah. talking about the spray because on a single. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh it's yeah. The smaller the orifice that it's air coming out, because uh, it, it. Yeah. The, the actual different uh, how. How it's between a single action and a dual action. Dual action controls the amount of pain. You single can action, narrow spray pattern. It, if you know what an atomizer, perfume atomizer, it creates a negative pressure pulling up the paint and then spraying it. Yeah. The smaller that tip, finer the detail you can paint. Larger the tip, more area it covers all at once. Is that the same with uh, dual action? But dual action is different with the uh, actual. You got a combination of the air, as well as the the air is not as important uh, other than the spread, as as much as the needle size. Yeah, the needle size determines how small or how tight the uh, the spray is. If I remember correctly, I've got a point three needle in that, which is good for most fine yeah. stuff. And yeah. gen general um, spraying. The um, I think I think this one has a five. That's a five. Yeah, five. That, I like a, I four myself most of yeah, the time. Um, now I, I did have one with a point two. That was um, a very cheap Chinese one. Having yeah. said that, that lasted me some years, and and I I was able to get some very good um, uh, effects using it. So I was quite fortunate. Uh, and here. Here's a trick, especially for someone new into airbrushing. Get yourself a paint palette tablet or one yet and practice just spraying with your airbrush on the, the paint palette now, rather than wrecking your model. Yeah. Learn how to control your brush and to get your spread and just practice on the paint palette. Yeah. I, and, I, I would suggest if you've got some plastic art, Try spraying yeah. a plastic card because you can clean the paint off that afterwards as well. Yeah, and you get an accurate for the material. For, yeah, for, for, for uh, spraying on the material. Oh yeah, plastic yeah. spoons. Yeah. Well. spoons. Yeah, plastic spoons. Plastic well, spoons. Yeah. yeah. You, you know the the other thing. Yeah, as long uh, as you uh, as long as you write on the back of them, what what color you <laughs> sprayed? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, that that would help to know that uh, too. But when it comes to expense, you do not. And I want to stress this: you do not need to spend a lot of money to get a good result of an airbrush. Yeah, it's a matter of uh, going along with your budget and with anything in scale modeling, learning your technique to adapt to it, and then once you have adapted your technique with it, you can come out with phenomenal results. Uh, so. You can buy an airbrush for thirty dollars, if not less. Yeah. It will behave the same way as a two, one or two hundred dollar brush. Yeah. It's just a matter of adapting to it. You're, I don't think the expense of a brush connotates quality. Yeah. Really See, the, diff the difference is you're not like an airbrush artist who's painting all day long every day mm -hmm. and can actually wear a brush out. Then it's a little more and stages to buy a more expensive airbrush. But for us, for the amount of time that we actually put on an airbrush, you don't need to buy an expensive one. No, you don't. And I, I, I'm a little biased when it comes to Vallejo paint. And yes, Vallejo paint is a pretty good, a very good all around paint uh, to use because it's easy to clean up. It's water-based. Uh, the metallics are amazing for water-based. Uh, yeah, it's a good all around. And if you um, create a foundation on an airbrush from that point, you can probably branch out to maybe other paints or other um, techniques or whatever else. But yeah, a cheap airbrush, Vallejo, that's a great start. 
Yeah, yeah. You can also I'm use. Uh, I find I find it works nice. Is I use the uh, I use mostly uh, uh, artist acrylic liquids is what I use most of the time. Uh, Hank, Hank Bird's asked me a, a question about. Uh, did, I'm assuming you mean this airbrush, Hank Bird. Uh, that one is actually an unbranded, cheap airbrush I picked up at a model show, and I and I don't think I paid more than twenty twenty three pounds for it. Twenty four pounds, five pounds. I don't think I paid much more than that for it. It came with different size cups, so you can actually have a bigger cup or an even I think an even smaller cup than that. Um, it's uh, there's an adjustment at the back for how far you can bring back the trigger. So, uh, and that uh, that one actually lasted me for a good three years. Um, it's only just now the nozzle has, has started to go. Um, so I've actually moved on now. I, I bought myself a, an Iwata Neo, and I didn't realise what a good airbrush was like until I got a new Arta Neo, so I'm very happy with that. Having said that, for a starter airbrush, going for something like that, just to get the hang of airbrushing and get and to understand, uh, to work out whether you can actually get along with an airbrush, it's better to go for not one of the really cheap, really cheap and nasty ones, but get a sort of a reasonably priced but unbranded one, just you know, to to uh, to try to started, out. yeah, yeah. Now, now you asked about moisture traps, and I've got one on the end of that because I've I've got a quick release. I have a quick release because I've got several airbrushes. Oh, that's the handiest thing going is a quick yeah. release, and and I've got that on there. But I don't rely on that to, to trap all the moisture. Um, if you have a compressor, make sure you have. A, um, screen, a, regu a regulator with a moisture trap underneath it yeah. as well. Uh, I'll uh, screen share it. Uh, let's see. Is this the right? Uh, ah, yes. Full yeah, screen. that's got the trap. Yeah, you go. you uh, got the trap, trap is right there. Yeah. And there's usually a button on the other side. There's of a screw on the bottom yeah, for releasing a, the moisture if there's any trap yep. in there. Yep. Yeah. Uh, I only uh, this. In fact, this is a compressor that I have. Um, I think it's a well. This is a master one. It just has a Pache uh, brush set. In fact, this is a brush. This is the H series Pache brush. This is what I use, and I feel confident enough to graduate to a dual action. <laughs> uh, so, if you're getting into it first time, honestly. I'm kind of a stick in the mud when it comes to stuff. Once I get used to something, I don't want to change. Really, if you get a dual action, you'll you'll wonder why you never went to it in the first place. <laughs> I've gotten so used to fiddling <laughs> with this, uh, and fiddling is definitely a good way to characterize it. Cleaning it is very difficult, uh, time consuming, yeah. and whenever uh, uh, Tony showed me, took apart his master dual action airbrush, he's like, Jack, you should just try this. It's so much easier. He's done in less than five minutes cleaning well, it. You have to have enough pressure going through the airbrush to actually pull the paint up out or of the Or the paint has to be thin enough. Uh, yeah. And the paint has to be thin enough. And, and, and you will get splatter. and It can, yeah. 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 And, and another thing I found out, too, that if things aren't balanced just right, uh, it'll pull the paint up just fine, spray the mist just fine, but by the time it hits the model, it's dry. Yeah. Yeah. Then, then that, and you're spending forever trying to paint something, and you end up splattering it because uh, that's the only way you wet paint will come onto your model. <laughs> so uh, again, it goes back to what you want to get yourself used to. If you get used to this, I don't know how what kind of personality you are, but my personality is once I got used to something, I'm very reluctant. And Tony is forcing me down that path of trying out new things. Yeah, well, that's another thing when you're talking about paints and the airbrush. Uh, certain paints will naturally dry out quicker once they leave the tip of the brush. So sometimes you have to add what we call a retarder to the paint. Uh, in my case, I'm okay. using a paint medium to thin it out that has retarder built into it. So I don't have to mix anything with it. So it's just automatically there. And... Uh, That'll yeah. prevent that problem. You you can also get something 
like an airbrush flow improver. Yeah. Mm, which is the same sort of thing. It's the yeah. same, same, same sort of thing. Um, I will say that uh, Vallejo um, has formulated so that it works. If you try to find a substitute, the formula won't be fine enough to, to do the same thing. Uh, so, yeah, stick with the... I think if... Excuse me. I think if you spend the time and money on the paint itself, not the airbrush, you would come out with results yeah. you yeah. would like. Spend more time and effort on the paint, the field of paints, as opposed to the airbrush. Now, uh, Heath brought up the um, spray gun. <laughs> oh, the, 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 the trigger action airbrush. Yeah. Yeah. This. Yeah. That, oh, no, no. Well, no, the, 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 the that type or you want one of these? no, there is actually a trigger action airbrush. Um, I'm trying to, I think that might be an Iwata. Um, if you can find an Iwata trigger action one. They are a dual What's action. A, uh, spray gun? Uh, Iwata, um, was it trigger airbrush? All right, let me, uh, while, while I go search up the screen, share this. Uh, I looked up Iwata. Iwata, Iwata, There you Iwata. go. There it is. There He's talking there. about one of these. That's the one. Is this the one? Yeah, yeah. Now, those are still dual action. Yeah. But the first bit of pulling back the trigger starts the air, and then the further back you pull the trigger, the more the paint comes through. Yeah, of course, it's, it's, a, yeah, it's a double and, angle. And, it's a double and, on the trigger. Yeah, and they're really good for people who have trouble holding, especially if you're doing a lot of spraying, because yeah. um, your finger does get tired when you're pushing down on the button on the top. And that you actually have... Now, uh, someone yeah. else that was extolling the virtues of the, the trigger action dual action airbrush and how much more comfortable it is so i've, I've been i'm one of those for myself to be honest yeah but um but yeah they're nice if you're doing a larger surface yeah that's what i was showing was more for a larger surface this is yeah, still yeah what, what, what you were showing was more like uh, what you'd use on a car yeah yeah, yeah. full-size yeah. car <laughs> so, so, and there uh oh look yeah, at that. there you go yeah Nice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, That's the water revolution. This one. Hmm. Uh, it's got a, a side cup. Yeah, it's a side mount cup. Oh, you can you. Uh, I can put it right or left. Oh, yeah. right. Okay, that's that's useful. Oh yeah. wow! I never seen one of these. I have to admit, I learned something today. Yeah. Yeah. You can buy a handle for this, like a trigger. The handle you can buy a handle add-on for this brush. Yeah, oh, a, a hand grip. Yeah, grip. Yeah, hand grip. Yeah. But this one you don't need it as much because once you put the. Uh, uh, once you put the water trap on it, you've got a built-in handle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> pretty much. Uh, pretty much. Yep. Yeah. Gives you something to hang on to. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder who gets that reference. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, I think I think we got this horse pretty well beat um, in in some regard, but we did touch upon very briefly with the uh, hand brush. And I think the only thing that that came up, and I think it's probably the only rule is find if you can find a natural bristle for like lacquers and enamels, uh, where the uh, you would want to use uh, synthetic for like the water-based ones, and try to get the finest feather tips as possible. Yeah. yeah. Um, there's things about. Uh, hand brushing that none of these two other ways you can do and it's a technique called dry brushing yeah. now dry brushing will come into a huge help if you are uh, typically uh, figures 
when you're painting figures. Yeah, or anything that's got small detail, raised detail. Little you want, you want yeah. to do dry yeah. brushing. Yeah. Little people. <laughs> uh, yeah, they're, they're, everything has its uh, place. Uh, but I, I wouldn't necessarily get a 350 scale uh, refit enterprise and hand brush it. <laughs> I would mm, not do that. No, that would take a while. <laughs> quite a while uh, yeah uh yeah that, yeah would, that would take that would take some skill to get a decent finish on it as well <laughs> having, having, having said that uh my first attempt at the old uh, amt enterprise d uh the one with all the raised detailing on it i uh, sprayed the base coat from a rattle can and then i spent i think the next four or five days painting the aztec pattern by hand <laughs> well, I can remember back when I started. After, well, after, after that, I got so exhausted with it, I uh, put it to one side and never finished it. Yeah, when I started modeling, I mean, we're talking now dark ages, it seems like now. Oh, the, only I, the, only thing I had, the only thing I had available to start out with was this little humble cans of paint. That's all I had to start with. Right. Yep. Uh, you, you thought dry brushing, you need to use a coarse brush, not a fine haired one. Again, it's about the results you want. Yeah. You can do dry brushing with either or, but I was probably find dry brushing with a fine tip. Probably the paint would dry too fast, maybe, because uh, it had a uh, paint is over a larger area. Mind you, a bristle, you got to think of a bristle when you lay out a bristle flat, it's area. If you have a fine tip, you have more area than a coarse tip which yeah. means your uh, paint will dry a lot faster as an airbrush technique than on a course. So they are, if you want streaks, then a coarse dry brush technique would work. That's what I used in the theater was coarse dry brushing because up close, it looked like, looked like hell. That's but what a fan brush is. It looked awesome. That's what a fan brush is. R well, yes. Uh, fan brush, fan brush. I think I have one handy here. I've never used this. That's a yeah. fan brush. Hmm. Um, I, I go to Walmart, and you can buy different kinds of different types of, and you don't have to pay too much for those again. Uh, again, it's just like airbrushing, hand brushes. You don't have to spend a lot of money on them. It's just a matter of understanding their properties and getting used to them and learning them just like anything else. Uh, but no, you could, you could use coarse or, or fine. Uh, I don't think that really matters. It only matters what kind of a uh, uh, result that you want. Yeah, the kind of result that you want depends. The yeah. brush affects that. I've, I've got an example that may, may be helpful. I don't know. Um, I'll try and share the screen. Ooh, that looks good. Now, that's pri that's, this is before dry brushing. This is like the when I've been painting on the paint chips and that. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I put some um, weathering clay washes on it which mostly get cleaned off afterwards and then uh, that was with um, a very light dry brushing of Vallejo steel mm. and if you notice the edges it just picks out the edges uh, with with a, that metallic slightly worn through metallic sheen and it and it just it 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 gives it a little bit of weight. You can see on on the points of the um, the guide horns on the tracks um, that that's the uh, um, and, and also the edges, the the very edges of the, the the plates and that you can just make out. Obviously, oh, and the the gun in particular, the gun was actually painted German grey and then dry brushed with Vallejo steel. So yeah, metallic, it, yeah, yeah, and so it gives it that metallic, but you really need to dry off the brush. Uh, so essentially, you've got almost none of the liquid left, but you have some of the pigment in the brush. So mm -hmm. you're just dusting it on almost. Um, so and and of course the uh, the exhaust at the back that has a very light dry brushing of the steel over over the rust, so that um, yeah. Um, yeah, so 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 that that that's one of the effects that you get with dry brushing. I mean, if we go back to before the dry brushing, again, 
it's how stark it looks. I mean, that, that's also without the weathering. Um, going back to before the chipping, and that's how clean it looks. And it looks toy-like when it's yeah. like that. I find you using a brush for weathering gives you a better result. I think. Yeah. Than, oh yeah. I'm trying to use an airbrush. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. I'd, I'd almost never weather using an airbrush. Uh, mm. I may, I may do a pre-shade sometimes. Pre-shading is about the only type of um, but, weathering that but, we can do. Yeah. Or, or if if there's an area that's supposed to be like scorched and dirty, I may use an airbrush to uh, lightly dust some of that in. Or, but or, it will still you're get. A, you're doing a sort of a mist white a mist coat for like sand or yes. dirt covering. Then yeah. you use yeah. an airbrush, but again, a long distance yeah. away is a mist yeah. coat. Probably helps too with uh, sure streaking. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. an, air, an airbrush and a very fine. Um, I'll, I'll just show you an example of a brush painted model from years ago that I, I did. Um, let's see if it'll let me share this one. Um, this one. Does that show? Yep. Yeah. Now, that is my old 124th scale Airfix Messerschmitt 109. Now, the weathering is way yeah. overdone, but that was all done with Humbrol enamels and brush painted and i used a range of things where i was like to get the mottling i tried stippling on the side but you can see that i really hadn't really got the technique down that well oh that, i think it looks great <laughs> it, it, it's just it, it, it's it's way overdone for me I, I, it, it does actually need to have a repaint because that that was before i ever had an airbrush so um you know, I, I I was pleased with this at the time, but the more I look at it, the more I think, yeah, that that needs a clean up. <laughs> you know what? Um, like water condensation frozen. Yeah. Because because of, because of my aversion to an airbrush, that's one of the camouflage screen schemes that I uh, steer clear of. Right. <laughs> the the the, uh, the the sort of like the dabbled effect. Yeah, the the mottling. Mottling. That's it. Yeah. 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 Uh, so, uh, quite, hard to, quite hard to do with a, yeah. a, a, a rattle cam. Yeah, I would uh, say it's yeah. impossible to do. <laughs> no, it's not because you can actually mask the models. Yeah, and then right. and then, uh, but you have to mask quite a distance away, so you got a good standoff. Yeah. So it, then, when you you spray on, you you get the soft the soft and edge you, of the mottling. You have to do it kind of in reverse. Uh, if it's a, a dark modeling on a light background, you have to do the dark Put color first. The dark color, and then, then uh, you use your whatever it is, balls of blue tack or, or silly putty or whatever yeah. to do the, the I, I, I would say little balls of blue tack spacing off uh, a piece of card cut to the right shape. Hmm. Heck, yeah. I've even used Play Doh, but that doesn't stick too well. Uh, Russell. <laughs> anyway, sorry. <laughs> Russell also. <laughs> Uh, says, uh, this is, I hope you're still with us, Russell. You asked a while ago. He's always had trouble with Tamiya clear colors through his airbrush. They always seem to run or pull. What's his problem? Probably trying to spray them through too much at a time. Yeah, he's, oh, he's putting too much paint on the, uh, yeah. on the area. Okay. Yeah. So multiple, it's, it's, light, right? multiple light coats are far superior to one heavy coat. Yeah, so you're, you're, just, um, you're just putting the, too much paint on at a time. Clear colors have a tendency to be, to be very viscous. 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 Yeah. viscous. The yes. carrier in, uh, I think, in, in clear uh, color seems to be heavier somehow than. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's di uh, it is difficult uh, to spray them. Um, uh, I actually had trouble eat, not long ago trying to spray the clear green on yeah. my UFO. Then that's all. That's, that's all has to do too, with how much you thin the paint. So with the clear colors, because they're fairly watery, in some cases you don't even have to. Thin them. So, yeah. so Randall was saying. So. <laughs> Sorry, uh, Randall. Yeah, just uh, I've, I've encountered exactly the same problem with rattle can clear colors. And yeah. The the carrier foam just seems to be that little bit heavier, so yeah. you then have to. Lay, lay off it even further back with it with them i think so yeah means even more masking yeah. <laughs> that's the one, that's the one advantage of one one advantage of of many i suppose of uh, of airbrushing is that uh uh overspray 
is not as as bad mm. as, as it would be with uh, a rattle cam. Yeah. Uh, funny thing is, I found that with metallics from the rattle cam, they seem to uh, the, the 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 metallic pigment gets absolutely everywhere. Uh, if, I'm, if, I'm airbrush, if I'm painting, say, a flat surface with the metallic, I, I also have to mask the back side of it as well. Yeah. Because it, <laughs> The yeah, because you have to cover the entire model except for the bit that you want to paint. Yeah, yeah. pretty much, yeah. Well, and, and probably mask the room off as well. I would have thought. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, what, that's why I go outside to do my spraying. My, my, my spray booth is my backyard. <laughs> Which is why you have a slightly silver cat. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and house. And, and house. And car. And car. Well, the car's at the front of the house. It's not too bad. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I he brought something up too that a, a exclusive car builder told me one time. Uh, George says that uh, he works at a store that sells automotive paint. That's what he usually uses. And this old uh, exclusive car modeler, oh, just go into a, a auto shop and get uh, auto paint. And uh, if you know anything about cars. Uh, this is a 64 GTO yep. that I painted that I'm going to finish in the winter time because if there, if I can't use automotive paint indoors. There's no way. <laughs> no. Yeah. So I got the body uh, painted. Let me uh, see if I can. Not, not even a spray boo to get that spin out But that, that's the thing, too. You can <laughs> for automotive paint, especially for, go to an yeah. auto color store. They can mix whatever color you want. If you're looking for a specific model, they can mix that. You can get it in a small jar, like a touch-up jar, or they can also put it in a spray can for you. And you can put it through an airbrush if you so choose. Yeah. Oh yeah. Um, I oh, use a you can get it in a, bottle, in a touch up what they call a touch-up bottle. So. But that show, show it again. You can get you can get from the color from a automotive paint store what they call a touch-up bottle. Uh -huh. which is, yeah. That, that's actually for painting fridges and freezers and yeah you know appliances yeah. but it's the same same sort of deal it's yeah. um the nice nice thing about the halfords range is that they also do uh primers that are formulated yeah. specifically for, for plastic. plastic yeah yeah, we, we, yeah. um and, Hang, uh, hangerbird says he has problems with yellow and white randall according to jack up here I'm, I'm actually quite famous for the, my aversion to the color yellow <laughs> <laughs> but you keep running into it all the time it's aversion therapy jim i'm trying to you know get, 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 well, yeah. um, I'm, I'm, I'm actually. I've got to the stage now where I can actually say the color yellow without the with, nervous tick, without the eye going. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and I um, asked, and uh, it was very spirited. I, I like the new format. One hour, just get it in there and get it really concentrated. Get people thinking about something. And Russell, and I didn't know I can actually do this. Russell came up with the perfect ending of this. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, we all get a little impatient watching paint dry. <laughs> <laughs> Whether yeah. it's a rattle can, a brush, uh, bristle we, brush, or an airbrush, it's all we have to, we have to touch it just That's to see if it's dry. Yeah. <laughs> That's what going to resist that. That's all. <laughs> Yeah, well, that's I, and and the thing that solves that for me is work when I know I'm going to be waiting a long time for paint to dry. For like the example, this big one, this big it's on a palette fifty. I painted it and I started my next project. <laughs> yeah, get, put, it, put it aside and forget about it. Yeah. Uh, so anyhow, um, yeah, it was it was a great show. I, I think we'll, we'll probably encroach on this subject uh, maybe in a few months, see how this all pans out. If you have any ideas out there about uh, topics, please make a comment on the YouTube uh, page. 
Uh, I look at it maybe once a week or so, and I'll, I'll respond if it needs responding to. Give the ideas for future shows, that'd be great. Um, and I love this show, I hope you all did too. And I want to thank each and every one of our pros. And, and I'm glad you, all three of you showed up because you all have a certain um, expertise uh, in all of this. So thank you, Jim, for stopping by. You're welcome. And uh, you're the steadfast devotee, and I, I really, <laughs> <laughs> I really en enjoy your uh, wisdom in all of this. And of course, uh, there's Phil, uh, obsessive detailer, OCD detailer. I think is more OCD. I think you got to change that to OCD. Uh, we should talk about detailing because you're very, very good at that, and you've got an eye for detail. So maybe someday we'll talk about that too. And uh, Randall, distracted? Yes, you are. <laughs> I really uh, appreciate uh, your uh, input and in all of this. Yes. Oh, oh, sorry. J just for George. George? Yeah. <laughs> I, have to, I have to put my uh, uncle Uncle Martin antenna back on again. You <laughs> know what I mean. <laughs> uh, I would like to thank all the participants to Hangerbird. Great questions, along with Russell. Uh, Heath even stopped by. He's probably Betty Buys. And George, the mayor of the live chat, is stopped by as well. All of you had great questions, and uh, I'm glad you all showed up uh, for a great show. And thank you. And, uh, for George. <laughs> gotta get the evil panda in there. Uh, the next show, I think August uh, hmm, 1st, oh, the August 1st is uh, three weeks from now. Uh, August is a long weekend here, I don't know. Is August 1st a long weekend for can Canadians? Yeah. Want to do the 8th? We can do the 8th. Okay, yeah. the 8th of August. 8th of August, because the 1st, this just seems sort of like, yeah, that's the first Saturday of the month, but meh. It's too much the first of the month. <laughs> so we'll be back August 8th with something more. Don't know what it is. Again, got suggestions. And if you don't, I'm going to have to come up with something. Until then, happy modeling, everyone. Happy modeling. Bye. Bye.